<laughs> so, I have been tagged by the lovely Amanda from the Naughty Librarian to do what I believe is an original tag, the back to school book tag. Let go. these questions. Number one, new school, new year, the start of something new. I just jumped right into it, didn't I? Oh well, too late. Pick an awesome debut novel for novel. Novel. For this, I picked City of Brass by S.A. Chakrabarty. If you have not read this, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I love this book so much that I bought multiple copies and sent them to people so they would read them. I did. And I have three, four, four copies I have a copy like this, well I have this copy, I had a copy exactly like this that I then painted gold for a video and I will link that video down in the description box. And then I gave that one away actually to a co-worker last week so she would read it so ha, multiple copies again given to people. Then I have a paperback copy of this and then I have the UK arc of this. I want the US arc, <laughs> so bad. Anyway, it is a high fantasy story in a Middle Eastern setting and the magic system is so fucking gorgeous and her writing is awesome and it's good shit. It's just good shit. I'll link my review of it down below. Question number two. Teachers. They're there to teach and guide you. Pick a character that is full of sage-like wisdom. For this one, I picked Acheron or Ash from the Dark Hunterverse. Now, Ash, for those of you who know him, is know him, know the series, is super old, super wise. He is the leader of the Dark Hunters, but he also has these, so look, he has these wise tidbits and he says things sometimes like, life isn't finding shelter in the storm, it's about learning to dance in the rain. Or, it's easy to look at people and make quick judgments about them, their present and their past, but you'd be amazed at the pain and tears the single smile hides. What a person shows the world is only one tiny facet of the iceberg hidden from sight. And more often than not, it's lined with cracks and scars that go all the way to the foundation of their soul. But then he also says things like, um, so, when people ask him, hey, so Ash, you're omniscient, right? Tell me what's at the end of everything. And he goes, the letter G. So it just kind of depends on what mood Ash is in, but he is my favorite wise guy who has a heartbreaking. This is his backstory, BT Dub. Heart breaking. Number three, favorite subject. Everyone has that one class that's their favorite. Recommend a book from your favorite genre. So I read a lot of genres, but the one thing they all have in common is romance. So I picked romance. And right now the book I want to recommend to people is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Hanger. It's awesome. It's so good. It's fuck. So this one has a uh, really, really, really smart and socially awkward autistic female main character and then the love interest is a professional escort who looks like a famous K-pop singer or Korean drama actor, one of the two. And it's so fucking good. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. Like for those of you who like The Hating Game, I like The Hating Game. This is 350 times better. Four, syllabus. The basic layout for everything that's going to happen this semester. Pick a book that was predictable. For this one, so it's not even out of the package it came in. This one is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass. This is kind of like an interim book after A Court of Wings and Ruin in the A Court of Thorns and Roses universe. It's like book 3.5 and it is completely fucking pointless. And it was predictable because oh, what did I say it was going to be out? Faye fucking. That was all it was about. That was, that was the sum of the plot. So I was curious to read this so I bought an ebook because this one came like three days late. This is the special edition from Books A Million with the art on the inside. And I read that book in three hours and I was so fucking mad at it that when this finally got here I didn't even fucking open it. I didn't took it from Denver to Washington like this. I didn't use this motherfucker to prop up my ring light. I done chucked it all over the goddamn place. It just makes me mad. It's predictable in how much it sucked. It was predictable in that there was no plot. It was predictable in that it was going to be essentially fan fiction. And it was predictable that it wasn't even good fan fiction. I didn't like it. I'm sorry. And I will tell you all day every day. A 
Court of... What the fuck is the second one? A Court of Mist and Fury, I really liked. That was my favorite. A Court of Mist and Fury is actually what got me. Um, it, it's how I discovered BookTube and started my channel. So, that being said, it's not that I don't like the book or the universe. It's this, though. Garbage. Hot garbage. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. It's hot. Hot trash. Number five. Pencils. I knew I was supposed to be taking those, but mainly I would just draw. Pick a character who is an artist. For this one, I picked Karu from the Daughter Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lanny Taylor, which I still have not finished because the first one broke me, and I picked up the second one. It's even angstier and just... My spirit's not ready, Jesus. I just can't. I'm gonna just need some something, but that's something whiskey ain't gonna help with, so I'm just not ready, okay? I'm not. So I've only read the first one, but it is gorgeous. It is heartbreakingly beautiful. The story is really, really, really gorgeous, and I don't know how the characters in this one are gonna work it out in book two, but the world and the magic system, even without the beautiful story, like, if you like the darker shade of magic and you're like, and it really connects with the characters, which was my thing, and... The world building though was great. This one's got like characters that just rip your heart to shreds and then the world that just keeps sucking you back in when you want to put it down because the characters rip your heart to shreds. You just can't, you, you just, you're stuck. But <laughs> Kuru who is the main character in this one is also an artist and she would draw the um, chimera that she lives with and people would think that they were just fantasy drawings but they were the actual people who raised her. Six books. You know those things that have all the knowledge in them? What books are you currently reading? So right now I am reading Belle, an Amish retelling of Beauty and the Beast by Sarah Price. Bethany from Beautiful Bookish Bethany sent me this with a surprise box of goodies when she also sent me um, Fury Born when she went to the book launch release party event thing thing and got a sign for me. She also surprised and sent a bunch of other stuff with it. This is one of the books she sent because I love retellings. But she did not know that I also really like Amish stories. I don't know why, but I really do. They just interest the shit out of me and I really like them. So this is really awesome to me. I have not been reading much lately, so it's the reason I haven't finished anything that I have been reading for the past couple of weeks. But I started this one and I'm only on page 15, but I want to like get into it and finish it today or tomorrow. It is the story of basically um, Annabelle and then Adam Hirschberger who is the beast like character whose face is scarred from a childhood accident. He kind of stays on the fringes of society and lives on the outskirts and only rides the buggy into town every so often but he keeps the buggy dark and his face covered and etc. But Annabelle's father who is the inventor has kind of wasted their money, handles their finances poorly, is about to lose the farm. So what Annabelle does is agrees to marry Adam when Adam purchases the farm and says he will turn it back over to them in exchange for her hand in marriage and that starts the whole Beauty and the Beast you're my um, captive so to speak storyline. That's the thing but I really like it thus far. Seven. Backpack. You used to cram entirely too much stuff into mine. Pick a book that just had entirely too much cram into it. For this one, I picked And I Darken by Kirsten White. This one is a uh, Vlad Dracul, Dracul, Barbaslav, Barbaslav, I think. It, it, it's a Dracula, like his origin story, so to speak. It is the Vlad Tepish, Vlad Dracul, Vlad Barbaslav, Barbaslav. He's got a bunch of names. That guy. It's a retelling of that story but it's gender flipped. I thought the actual Dracula stuff was going to come into play in the first book it didn't. I haven't read book two or three yet but the only reason I say there's a lot too much stuff crammed into it it's really not busy like you're thinking I mean. What it is is that it starts pretty early in Lada's life. Lada who is female version of the original Vlad. Lada is a Vlad in this book. Um, Lada is it starts like basically when she was an infant and it goes, you know, it just goes at a pretty even keel up to when she's like, I think 13, 14, 15 is when this book ends. I'm like, I, I want to read about her impaling people and murdering people and she didn't do none of that. And I'm getting to the point to where I say it was packed too much full of stuff. Fucking, fucking, what the fuck is his name? Fuck. You whiny little bastard. What is your name? Radu? Radu. I... There's a tile too much of him in this book and I wanted to gather my own eyes out everything that I loved about the story rather made me hate it equally as much. They're just oh my god, he is the whiniest, bitchiest, like biggest pussy ever and just Ah I can't I can't I can't
can't do the fucking whining man stuff. Stop. Now, if this was 2018 and you're like 15, 16 and you whine, you're a child. In like the 14 fucking hundreds, by like 13-ish, you're a grown-ass man. Stop being such a wimp. Stop. You're in charge of a whole army and you still need mommy to hold your hand. He is the bane. He was the bane of my entire existence for the duration of like the reading of this book. He is the reason I don't pick up like book two. Then a lot of people who read book two were like, he had like a moment of usefulness. That's not enough to renew the fuckery that he that was Radu in this book. You got to do a full like 180 and turn to the Punisher and start ripping people's heads off fucking barehanded or something. He didn't do none of that shit. You just there was too much of Radu in this book, and the storyline dragged on. I feel like too much in like the beginning. I we needed the backstory and I get that, but I'm also like the impatient person that wants to get to like the story part. This whole book felt almost like a setup for book two, like the whole book. And for a first book, I want to like get into some like more meat and bones first to get to the actual like fight for her kingdom part instead of just like the learning why and like learning her personality. And that wouldn't have bugged me if I had spent too much time whiny fucking Radu. I just, oh god, it was painful. <sighs> this book was like a four or five star read for me, plus the ending. Like, I really love this book, but that motherfucker. Anywho, <laughs> number eight, school friends. Tag some people. So I want to tag Brandy from Brandy Janae's book shelf. I want to tag um, Steph from Steph's Romantic Book Talk. Romantic Book Talk. Why do I always do that? I want to tag Steph from Steph's Romantic Book Talk. I want to tag Cole from Who Picked This Book. I'm just going to go down the list because I always have to like go through the people I'm subscribed to to get names and stuff and I just I just I screw it up so I'll do that and I'll link all those people down in the description box and then go tell them on the Twitter that they're tagged this was really fun I like these questions so thanks to Amanda for tagging me and creating such a fun tag I'll link her tag duh also down in the description box and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more salty awesomeness and I'll catch you guys later bye